the Black Cloud Corps continued their relentless search for Wool. As always, Wool remained a few steps ahead, elusive and cunning. Runju, feeling foolish for falling for Wool's deceptive looks, vowed to skin him alive if she ever laid eyes on him again. Meanwhile, Deyoshi and Hayu tried to maintain productivity, but their efforts were overshadowed by the fear that Wool was out causing more trouble at the Golden Heaven Clan. In Chindu, two disciples took a break from their rigorous training to discuss recent events. Suddenly, a massive explosion rocked the area, prompting them to rush inside and investigate. The disciples recognized the telltale sounds and lights of the snow cloud piercing strike, a deadly technique they associated with the Emmy section. They suspected that the Emmy disciples had infiltrated their sanctuary, and Chong was caught in the middle of it all. Chong, practicing his martial arts, couldn't relax. Unexpectedly, an intruder approached, the very person he had feared. Wu introduced himself, and Chong's memory stirred. The ignoble clan branch manager had mentioned this name before. Why are you here in the middle of the night? Chong asked, suspicion in his eyes. Wu smirked. Anyone visiting secretly at this hour is up to no good. The same goes for me. Chong stumbled with his next question. Did you kill the Thunder Clan's young leader? Wool's response was chilling. Yes, I did. Grudges against your sect and the Emmy sect drove me. Chong pieced it together. Wool was not only an assassin but also a public enemy in Sichuan. The pieces of a dark puzzle fell into place. Was Wool the same assassin who had killed Wu Gunsang seven years ago? Wool confirmed it. I am he. Chong drew his sword, warning Wool that he had made a grave mistake. Wool could have stayed hidden and kept his life, but now Chong was determined to end it. The battle began, and Wool's daggers met Chong's furious strikes. With a single finger, Wool unleashed his soul reaping thread, suffocating Chong. The battle ended abruptly, leaving Chong gasping for breath. Wool's parting words were cold Send my greetings to Zhang Wan. Outside, the disciples witnessed the aftermath, an explosion that signaled Chang's demise. Blinded by rage, they blamed the Emmy sect, playing right into Wool's hands. Revenge was imminent. As the bloodshed escalated, suspicion faded. All that mattered was survival and vengeance. Amid the chaos, Young walked through the battlefield, feeling as though she had stepped into hell itself. How had things spiraled so far? Marian interrupted her thoughts. He had information about the killings and a name, Wool. The assassin who had taken Wu Gunsang's life seven years ago was now escalating the war between the Ching Chang sect and the Emmy sect. Ran couldn't fathom how Wool had learned the Emmy sect's snow cloud piercing strike. One of the disciples who perished in the cave had carried a secret manual. Perhaps Wool had retrieved a copy from that unfortunate disciple. Why would anyone carry a secret manual around? Ran wondered aloud. The disciple, acting as a mere messenger, cautioned that nothing was confirmed yet. But Ran knew the Ching Chang sect wouldn't accept such reasoning. They had no choice, they had to capture Wool. Determined to punish Wool for mocking the great Emmy sect, Ran set out to capture him herself. In Chengdu, at the Fire Dragon Room, Wool reunited with his old friend, Sochu. The place hadn't changed, Sochu still crafted deadly weapons that took human lives. Hey everyone! I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you found it entertaining, could we aim for 150 likes? It really supports the channel and helps us reach more amazing viewers like you. We'll pose the question to Sochu, how should we deal with those who cause suffering while believing themselves noble? Sochu, ever pragmatic, replied, do whatever you want as long as they all die. Taking a man with him, Wool instructed Sochu to watch closely. He wanted Sochu to witness the dagger he had crafted in action. Joy radiated from Sochu as they walked the streets of Chengdu together. Wool used the dagger to eliminate the remaining nobles, leaving Sochu in awe of its power. Sochu, humbled, asked if Wool needed his help. Bowed before Wool, he begged to assist. Meanwhile, the Thunder Clan leader, Tay, fled for his life. The Ching Chang sect's greatest warrior pursued him relentlessly. Tay's life ended abruptly, leaving the sect leader bewildered. 
Why had the greatest warrior taken Tay's life? The answer came from Mew, the assassin. Chong had died because of him. Mew vowed not to spare anyone connected to Chong's death. His murderous intent shook the sect leader, who wondered what had driven Mew into such darkness. Seven years ago, they had lost Wu Gun Sang due to the Emisex tricks. Now, Strong was gone. The future of the Ching Chong sect hung in the balance. Mew could no longer overlook the chaos. He flew away, leaving the sect leader's younger brother, Ha, concerned. Ha feared that if Mew joined forces with Jean, bloodshed would consume Sichuan. Jean, locked up since his son's death, harbored deep hatred for the Emi sect. Ha volunteered to investigate the strange events, hoping to reveal the truth. The fate of the Ching Chong sect rested in Ha's hands. Meanwhile, back in Chengdu, we'll review the ignoble clan branch manager's book. The Black Cloud Corps captain was a smaying, and Daoshi and Hayu were potential threats. We'll marveled at the wealth of information within those pages. The ignoble clan was undeniably top notch. Their intelligence network extended beyond Chengdu's martial artists, encompassing all of Sichuan. Memorizing this vast web of information would undoubtedly prove useful someday. As he surveyed the war torn landscape, guilt no longer plagued him. Imprisoned underground, survival was his sole purpose. There was no turning back, he had become a creature of necessity. Giving up was not an option, he would persist until the bitter end, even if that end lay among the flames. In the Hundred Flower Room, Emmy Sect disciples fought tirelessly to aid the injured. Medicine had run out, leaving them uncertain about replenishing their supplies. But Young, resourceful and unyielding, had already called for more. Her determination impressed Meringue, who marveled at her ability to secure supplies even in dire circumstances. Daoshi spoke of the Emisek's hidden talent, the best in a century. Zhang Wa's death had unshackled Young's potential. She knew how to deploy people effectively, commanding respect and loyalty. If Young ascended to the Emmy sect leadership, they could rise once more. But their conversation was interrupted. Ran, the Emmy sect leader, had arrived in Chengdu. Disciples paid their respects, but Ran's displeasure was evident. Surprisingly, Lady Wu from the Hundred Flower Room also paid homage to Ran. Lady Wu's unease hinted at a mistake she feared she had made. Inside the Hundred Flower Room, Young briefed Ran on every detail of the incident. Wu's name hung in the air, and Lady Wu grew nervous. Ran confronted Lady Wu, her eyes sharp and unyielding. Do you have anything to say? she demanded. Lady Wu hesitated, fear etched on her face. Pardon? she stammered. Ran pressed further. How are you related to Wu? Her grip tightened. Look me straight in the eye. I despise liars. Why were you so restless when his name was mentioned? Lady Wu's voice trembled. My apologies. I didn't anticipate things turning out like this. I merely wanted to use him. I never imagined it would come to this. If you assign a few people to me, I'll capture him and bring him here. I'll clean up this mess. Ran seized her again. Who ordered you to kill the ThunderClan's young leader? You could have lived quietly among men, like a flower. Lady Wu admitted her mistake. I'll live like a flower from now on, she whispered. Young sensed trouble and called out Rant's name, but it was too late. Lady Wu lay lifeless. Why? Young's fury erupted. You didn't need to go that far. She didn't act with malice. Killing her was unnecessary. Morang watched, awestruck by Young's power. Ran smirked, Young had finally revealed her true strength. Learn this, Ran said. Once you make exceptions, you'll keep making them. If someone commits a wrongdoing worthy of death, they must die. Young stormed out, leaving Lady Wu's body behind. Marianne realized Ran might have intended to kill Lady Wu from the start, to subdue the Hundred Flower Room. Ran's power surpassed mere martial mastery, she was meticulous. Ran called for Mar Yang, revealing her plan, the Black Cloud Corps would hunt Wu down. Two disciples disposed of Lady Wu's body in the forest, leaving it for stray animals. But Wu approached. 
gathering rocks, he buried her properly. He wouldn't apologize, they had used each other. Yet he vowed to avenge her, ensuring those responsible paid the price. Bereavement, the deepest loss, weighed on him. It was the sorrow of a parent losing their child. Meanwhile, at Jin's home, Ha knocked. Jin's manager appeared, and Ha requested an audience. The Ching Chong sect needed Jin's help. Jin, isolated since Wu Gun Sing's assassination, welcomed them inside. Ha revealed the assassin's technique, the same one that had killed Jin's son. Jin's fury ignited. The assassin who killed the Thunder Clan's young leader is the same assassin who killed my son, he declared. Ha, taken aback, asked, Is that true? What will you do about it? Jin's bereavement transformed into seething rage. In Chengdu, Wu practiced with his daggers near the well. But an approaching figure caught his attention, Run Ju. She remarked on his improved looks since their last encounter. Wu knew she hadn't come merely for a chat. Dayoshi and Hayu observed, impressed by Wu's heightened senses. Run Ju revealed that this was Will's final chance to join the Black Cloud Corps. If he refused, they would have to fulfill their client's request, to kill him. Bickering ensued. Daoshi suggested that Wool hide better, but Runju insisted they stick to the mission. They had already informed the Emmy sect that Wool was dead. Even if Wool were discovered alive, he had grown too formidable for anyone in Sichuan to challenge. Daoshi revealed their client, the Emmy section. Wool questioned Daoshi's betrayal of clients and the importance of credibility. Daoshi dismissed credibility, claiming it no longer mattered in chaotic Chengdu. He didn't dislike Wool, he wanted him to join the Black Cloud Corps. Wool hesitated, refusing to compromise his assassin's integrity. Meanwhile, Runju pondered whether someone had hired Wool for the deeds in Chengdu. Wool reflected on his fallen friend Min's words, the crushing helplessness of facing insurmountable strength. Runju hit the mark, Wool's client was a woman. A man would charge into danger for a woman. Daoshi, surprised by Wool's sentimentality, demanded to know more about her. Runju attacked, creating chaos. But Wool vanished, leaving Marine to confront Runju. Marine's warning had been futile. Wool stood on the roof, exposed. Marine ordered Yang's men to kill him, but Wool's soul-reaping thread swept them aside. Wool taunted them, mocking their involvement in his war. Thank you.